the countdown clock is going to remain. We did uh, have some difficulty this morning shortly after we began fueling the external tank with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And here with us uh, at the console in the firing room is Doug Lyons, who is the STS-122 launch director. Doug, uh, tell us uh, exactly what happened and when it happened. Okay, I'll do that, uh, George. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, we're a little disappointed in, in, the, uh, in the events today. Uh, but we're certainly working to uh, resolve our issues and uh, make an attempt as soon as we possibly uh, can. Uh, the failure was a LH2 low-level liquid sensor, and folks are probably familiar with those. We also refer to them as our eco sensors. And uh, we had a failure of uh, sensor number three and number four. And in the system, we have a total of uh, four sensors. Um, the failure occurred during tanking around 16 minutes into fast fill. Um, and uh, we picked it up uh, while implementing our standard uh, checkout of the system. Um, we, it, we, as soon as we get these, these uh, sensors wet, we go through a battery of checks to make sure that they're operating um, nominally and properly. And uh, we were at a point in the test where we send um, commands to take all four sensors dry. And uh, when we did that, sensors one and two went dry as expected, and sensors three and four uh, uh, went wet. And, and right then we knew we had uh, an issue, and we stopped, and we picked up an uh, interim problem report. And uh, we have pre-planned procedures, troubleshooting procedures, and we, we put those in place and started working with, through our, our, our troubleshooting and collecting data so that we could uh, try to understand exactly, you know, what the situation was and why we were having this uh, problem. So we remained in that configuration uh, and continued tanking and did our troubleshooting and collected all the data that we could we could possibly um, collect. And uh, preliminary in indications are that we have uh, an open circuit there. Um, but again, uh, we've got to do some additional engineering analysis and evaluation to see if that is the problem. And then more importantly, where that open circuit is, whether it's a connector or a splice line or something of that nature. And uh, once we isolate that, then we can, we can determine the appropriate um, um, corrective action. Uh, uh, tell us briefly what these sensors are doing. What are they for? Why do we need them? Well, the sensors, um, um, as a set, are a redundant engine uh, cutoff system. The uh, flight software, uh, you know, and the engine controllers run the engines through a scent, and at the proper time, they've got timers. At the proper time, they'll cut off the engine. Um, and this is a backup to that. If for some reason um, we're depleting LH2 faster uh, than, we, than we had thought, um, when, when, these, when these sensors go dry, they will send commands to cut off the engine to ensure that we have a safe engine cutoff and our LH2 quantities don't get too low. So it is a redundant system, but it is a, a, a system that's critical to us, and so we certainly want it to um, operate in to go fly. Right, now what do we know about the status of the sensors themselves? Well, they're part of the failure tree. Um, you know, the, there's wiring from the point sensor box, which takes the readings, and there's wiring through the orbiter aft into the external tank to the sensors. So the sensors are located in inside the LH2 tank, and, uh, of course, they were functioning when installed and checked out. They've been through checkouts, you know, as we've gone through our processing flow from build all the way to reception, all the way out to the pad. Um, of course, this is the first time that they've seen cryos. So, um, you know, that's certainly something that the engineering folks are looking at and maybe, maybe, you know, contributing to this condition. What's the launch team doing now? Where do we go from here in the uh, troubleshooting and try to determine what's wrong? Well, as I said, we've, uh, we've collected, um, you know, a, a great deal of, of data through our troubleshooting. And engineering folks and the subspecialties are, are looking at that data now. The plan is to, to get that collective technical team together at noon today and, and look at all our options and, um, and then um, based on those options and narrow them down to the, the ones that are, that are best and then we'll take those options to the mission management team and they're going to convene at 1400 today. So coming out of that meeting we should have a, a good forward plan and, and know what direction we're heading. 
Um, in terms of the countdown, um, what we've elected to do, uh, we are currently in stable replenish, and in that configuration, it is safe to send folks out to the to the launch pad. So, um, in order to get a, an idea of how the tank is performing in terms of ice and and the foam, we um, we did send our final inspection team out to the pad, and they are going to do a um, expedited. Uh, inspection of the tank. We want to try to get in the drain a little quicker. Usually they run about two and a half hours for their inspection. Um, we've asked them to narrow that down to an hour and, and they're doing that by going to targeted key areas of interest on the tank. Um, so that'll be valuable data um, in terms of the condition of the tank for our ET folks and our um, systems and engineering integration project. So uh, we thought that was smart to go do. Um, after that hour is up, we'll go ahead and uh, ask them to clear the pad. When we do that, we'll go into um, drain of the locks and LH2 uh, tanks. That runs a couple hours. And then what our plan is to do is to get into a 24-hour um, scrub turnaround um, posture. And we've got procedures uh, that allow us to go do that. And uh, so that's, that's, that's our forward plan here in the firing room and here with the countdown. We want to make sure we preserve the capability to go tomorrow if, if that's what the technical community uh, determines is the right thing to do. So we're keeping all our options open. And again, I really don't have more to tell you, you know, than that other than, uh, you know, Will more to come. Will they do any uh, troubleshooting as we detank or do we have what we need at this point? Well, that's that's a very good point. Um, there there are, there is some troubleshooting that they'll do during um, detank, and it essentially involves um, watching. We've got voltages that that monitor these um, these two sensors, and and the voltage is high now, indicating an open circuit, and they'll monitor those and see if they go closed, just to get some additional data that might you know give them an idea of of where the the problem is. So. They'll be doing troubleshooting. It's not really active troubleshooting. It's mostly monitoring, but that, that data will be used um, in their engineering uh, evaluation. All right, Doug. Well, thanks very much, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing and talking with you again at uh, approximately 4 o'clock after the mission management team meeting along with the uh, chairman of the mission management team, Leroy Kane. So, uh, Doug, thank you, and we'll let you uh, go back to the Council to work on our detanking operations now. Since I gather we're we're, we're either are we detanking now or about to go into that? No, um, we're in replenish now uh, with the final inspection team out at the pad. While they're out at the pad, we're we need to stay in stable replenish. Um, so once they do clear the pad, and that'll be um, somewhere within an hour now that they've been out there for a while. At that point, when they're clear, we'll go from replenish to detanking. So I would estimate um, probably around 11.30 uh, we'll be in a position to detank, and we've got a couple hours to, to do that. All right, Doug, thank you very much for uh, coming over to talk with us, telling us where we are in, uh, in this situation, and uh, we'll be talking with you later this afternoon. Thanks very much. Okay, and uh, can I make one more comment? Sure, please. Okay, and just uh, in terms of the team, uh, the team uh, is, uh, remains in, in good spirits, and we really are confident that, that we can work our way through this and, um, you know, get a few launch attempts uh, in this window. So we we're, we're st still have, uh, you know, hope and, and reason to believe that, that we're going to get off in December, and that's, uh, that's where we're all shooting, and, uh, and uh, again, we're confident we'll get there. All right. Thanks, Doug, and uh, hopefully we'll be back here tomorrow uh, for another launch attempt if we can do that. Thanks very much, and that will conclude our uh, quick status. Our next uh, event will be the post-mission management team press conference at approximately 4 p.m. this afternoon. This is Shuttle Launch Control.